Why Radio Astronomy? I previously gave a brief introduction on the early history of radio astronomy, setting the scene for why humanity started searching the skies in radio. An interesting question then is why is working in radio useful? Why do we do this rather than rely on optical? Firstly, electromagnetic radiation comes from somewhere. If we see radio emission or optical emission, or say infrared emission, there's some process that produced it in space, or near your telescope for example, it might be some sort of earth signal. Some physical process causes a photon to be released and its frequency depends on the amount of energy given. There is then adjustment of that because of different forms of scattering, different processes that absorb and re-emit photons, all of that then gives rise to a final signal that we receive. Some of these processes form a spectrum. Photons emitted over a wide range of wavelengths. A good example of this is called black body radiation. In theory, it's an object that perfectly absorbs and perfectly emits radiation. We can say a black body of a particular temperature. Some things in astrophysics, for example, stars come fairly close to this. We also have things that emit at specific frequencies, for example, atomic emission lines. There are specific quantum mechanical processes that emit photons at this sort of frequency or this sort of wavelength. A good example in radio is the 21 centimeter line, a wavelength of 21 centimeters that is produced by neutral hydrogen. Because hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, this is a very useful thing to search for. This gives a very important reason for radio astronomy. Simply expanding the range of frequencies we observe in the sky expands our ability to understand the universe. We see more of these atomic emission lines. We see more of these wide ranges of wavelengths produced by different physical processes. And if we can work out what the physical processes are, then we can start to understand what is going on in space. Another point is that radiation can be affected by other objects in space. Of particular importance to radio astronomy is the fact that there are dust clouds in space that can often obscure optical telescopes' views of an object, but allow observation in radio. This is useful for identifying distant galaxies which could be obscured in the Milky Way if you use an optical telescope. There is one other, perhaps less glamorous, reason for using radio astronomy though, and that's the Earth's own atmosphere. This obscures or blocks wavelengths of light. Gamma ray and X ray astronomy, for example, basically have to be in space. Infrared astronomy is either space based or stuck on a very small range of mountaintops. And even optical astronomy has difficulty. We can use it on Earth, however, atmospheric distortion is far more a problem for it than radio, so most of our best optical telescopes are placed high on mountains because of this. Also, as any amateur astronomer will tell you, clouds are horrible and you find it very hard to see things as soon as they get in the way. Radio work must be kept fairly isolated from human emission of radio waves, but is otherwise quite flexible with the conditions, so some of the world's best radio telescopes are built in places that are convenient, even if they're always cold, wet and miserable.